many reviewers and owners of the Aula S17 Pro have raved about it and suggested that it might even be the best headphone amp on the market right now. Or maybe at least the best headphone amp within a certain price range. And so I went out and bought one for myself to see if it really is the best headphone amplifier under a thousand US dollars. At least that's the starting point that I was working with, and then we'll see if it's maybe even better than amps at a thousand, or maybe it's not so good as people are saying. In case you're not familiar with the S17 Pro already, it comes in with a retail price of 699 US dollars, and for that money, you're getting a fully discreet Class A headphone amplifier that'll output 7.5 watts into a 32 ohm load. And so just to make all those bits and pieces that I just said make sense, fully discrete means that it's using individual components such as resistors, capacitors, transistors to produce the sound, as opposed to little op-amp chips that you might be used to in some other devices. The class A part of it means that it's running in a mode that is less efficient in terms of power, it's going to get hotter, but it should also produce a smoother, better quality sound. And then finally, when we're talking about power output, Having 7.5 watts into a 32 ohm load means that it's still got nearly 3 watts into a 90 ohm load and just under 1 watt into a 300 ohm load. And so that means it's got plenty of power to drive any headphone on the planet, whether it's Sussvara's, 1266's, high impedance ZMF headphones or Sennheiser's, it's going to handle all of them beautifully. And so that of course brings the question of whether it sounds up to the task of some of those premium headphones, and that's what I was looking to find out. Before we jump into sound quality and start talking about the performance of the S17 Pro, the one final thing I want to mention, and we'll do a little bit more of a deep dive into specifications and a device tour at the end of this review, but the one other thing you need to know before we start talking about sound quality is that it's also got two current modes. And what that means, it's got nothing to do with the output of the sound or the power into your headphones. The current modes are all about the biasing of the transistor chips within the amplifier itself. And that all comes down to the fact that transistors operate most effectively within the middle of their capability range. And so what the designers will do is they'll apply a bias current to hold that transistor consistently within an optimal range. What that leads me to believe, and this next bit is just speculation, is that the transistors within the S17 Pro are probably at their optimal in the 100 milliamp bias range, and maybe not quite as good in the 50 milliamp range. The trade-off there, of course, is that if you're pumping more current consistently into the transistors, the amplifier is going to get hotter and it's going to chew more power in terms of for your power bill. And so I'm assuming that's why the designers gave us the choice here. And I'll talk in a moment about how the sound quality changes depending on whether you're in 50 milliamp or 100 milliamp mode. But first, let me tell you a little bit about the general sound quality of the S17 Pro. The way I made my notes on the sound quality for the S17 Pro was that I just ran it for a while, I listened to it, I got to know it, and then I sat down and I just made notes in the order that I noticed things. And this initial set of descriptions isn't comprehensive. We'll start to get a much better sense of the performance of the S17 Pro when I talk to you about it in comparison to a couple of other amplifiers that I tried it with. But for now, just connecting it up to the Chord Dave, which was being fed by the M Scaler, receiving a USB input from my PC, which is running a high quality JCAT card, but connecting all that up to the F17 Pro and listening with headphones like the Focal Utopias, the Meza Audio Elites, and the Dan Clark Audio E3s, that review is coming very soon. Listening with a whole range of headphones, the things that I specifically noticed about the S17 Pro, and the very first thing I noticed in particular was that it's got a wonderful sense of size and scale and positioning of the sonic image. So you get a really nice sense of where each instrument is in space, the overall soundstage has good size and scale and depth to it, and it's generally producing a very enjoyable presentation. I also think the tonality of the S17 Pro is excellent, it's very natural or neutral, it's not at all warm or thick, and indeed I don't understand why Aona have marketed this as having a tube-like sound, because I completely disagree with that. For better or worse, you might want a tube-like sound, this isn't the amp for you. But if you want a neutral or natural, clean sounding and powerful solid state amp, the S17 Pro definitely fits that bill. And in fact, probably the only criticism that I can level at the S17 Pro's sound is that I find the treble is just a little tiny bit grainy or brittle sounding at times. It's not quite as smooth or refined as I would like it to be. Now, generally speaking, that's not a big deal. It's not really harsh or really nasty. But I think it's worth being aware of if you've got headphones that already lean towards a bright or more energetic or aggressive sound, 
the S17 Pro might not be the best pairing. And we can get into that more when we get to some comparisons in a moment, because I've got two other excellent headphone apps to put the S17 Pro up against. Before we get there though, I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about those bias modes that I mentioned before. So we've got the 50 milliamp, which is the lower level bias, and the 100 milliamp, which is the higher level bias. As I said earlier, running it in the higher mode is going to produce more heat. It's going to make your power bill go just a little bit higher. But theoretically, it should produce slightly better sound. And indeed, I think it probably does. But the differences are very, very small. And I think this is quite an important point. I've seen some people say that it completely transforms the amp when going from 50 milliamp to 100 milliamp mode. And I really don't agree with that. I do think it makes a little bit of a difference. And specifically what I noticed was that the whole amplifier just becomes a little bit more relaxed to listen to in the higher bias mode. In general terms, the tonality doesn't change. The soundstage presentation doesn't change. Really nothing about it changes other than the fact that I found myself just relaxing into the music a bit more. And then when I went back to the 50 milliamp mode, I felt like there was that little bit of extra edge or brittleness to the treble again that little lack of refinement that I talked about before. To me, even in 100 milliamp mode, the sound from the S17 Pro does have that ever so slight sense of grain or edge to the treble, but it's definitely better by a very small margin in that high bias mode. And so I think what's happening is that maybe some people are being tricked by their own expectations when they're switching between them. And I think that might be tripping up some people when they're listening to the S17 Pro. For example, the channel Patron and I were chatting about this recently on the Discord server, and we were both talking about the fact that he'd gone from sometimes hearing a difference to hearing none at all. That gives you an illustration of how subtle the differences are. And it took me a little while to really get a handle on if there was a difference and what it was. So don't go into buying the S17 Pro thinking you're getting this vastly transformative sound the moment you switch into the 100 milliamp mode, because you're going to be disappointed by that. However, knowing that you can run it in that mode and get the optimal sound out of it, that's kind of nice. But it does make me wonder why the designers of the S17 Pro didn't make it just permanently the 100 milliamp mode amplifier. That's similar to what Burson Audio have done with all of their amps, where they run with a higher bias current. That's why there's a fan in the Burson Soloist GT and the Voyager. And so I just think that the S17 Pro may have been better served by being permanently in that high bias mode. Now, of course, that does mean more power consumption. I know some people have had problems keeping this amplifier cool enough when running it in that mode. But in my testing in my office, with generally kind of what I'd call average ventilation around the unit, it hasn't had anything stacked on top of it. But at the same time, I haven't done anything like put fans there to cool it. And it's always sat at around about 57 or 58 degrees Celsius. And it's never flicked back down into the lower bias mode. And that does include using it during some hot Australian summer days. So I don't really understand why they didn't just leave it in 100 milliamp mode, maybe do some extra work on the cooling and keep it there. That's a curious question. But the good news is you can switch between the modes. You can leave it in 100 milliamp mode all the time for yourself if that's how you want to use it. And that's what I would recommend. And so with that all said, the other thing I wanted to mention really quickly is I tried switching between low gain and high gain. And the good news is, as it should be, I didn't hear any difference between those modes. And so as is generally the case with most amplifiers, it's best off that you just leave this in whatever gain mode gives you the best range of volume control for your particular headphones. And with those kind of internal comparisons out of the way, it's time to get into what I think is going to tell the biggest story of the S17 Pro, and that's comparing it to some other headphone amps. I've got two in mind here, specifically because one sits below the S17 Pro in price and the other sits above. And that's the Gishelli Labs A3 Pro headphone amp and the Hyferman Prelude headphone amp as well. Kicking off with the Gishelli Labs A3 Pro that you can see behind me here. And this one comes in at about 500 odd US dollars off the top of my head. I haven't got it in my notes. I'll put it on screen, of course. Hooking up the two of these, you can obviously see immediate differences. And part of the differences here is that You've only got a single ended output on the front of the A3 Pro. It also doesn't have as much power as the S17 Pro. So that might factor in for those of you running a Susvara, an Abyss 1266, etc. But for most headphones on the planet, you could choose between either of these with no issues at all. The other thing to keep in mind with the A3 Pro, as you can sort of tell from its design, is that you don't need to worry about heat. This doesn't get anywhere near as hot as something like the S17 Pro does, and that's in large part because it's not trying to pump out quite as much power. For this test, I hooked up both of these headphone amps to the shit Yggdrasil. 
I was using SuperSword RCA cables to connect both of them because that way they're both getting exactly the same input. We're not giving one a benefit if there happens to be a benefit with XLR here. For the record, I don't think either of these amplifiers or the shit Yggdrasil has a huge difference between the XLR and all the RCA. And then the headphones that I used for this test were the Mesa Elites. One of the tracks that I listened to was number two by the Apples. And the first thing I noticed was that the A3 Pro comes across a bit more intimate. It doesn't have the sense of scale in the soundstage that I really enjoy about the S17 Pro. I also find the A3 Pro to be a little bit more polite, and that could be a good thing or a bad thing. As I said before, the S17 Pro does have a slightly grainy treble. I think in some ways the A3 Pro goes in the other direction and sometimes gets just a little bit too smoothed off, or as I said, too polite in the treble. It doesn't have the energy and the excitement that the S17 Pro can deliver, but I think there's probably a sweet spot between the two where there's a perfect balance of energy and refinement. Now, it's worth mentioning at this point that even though I was running RCAs into both of these, I was running obviously the single ended output from the A3 Pro because that's all it has, but I was running the balanced output from the S17 Pro in terms of the headphone connection. When I went to the 6.3mm connection on the S17 Pro, the differences between them did become a bit less apparent, but that was mostly to do with the staging and the presentation. The sense of space reduced a little bit on the S17 Pro via the 6.3mm connection, but that sense of energy and attack that the S17 Pro has, that generally stayed much the same. And that's where, again, I think they're quite different sounding headphone amps. Both are fantastic, but they've got different presentations. Where I start to separate these two is that I think sounds like an acoustic guitar being plucked or strummed even. Any sounds like that, that's where you're really going to hear the difference between the A3 Pro and the S17 Pro. The S17 Pro, as I've already said, can get a little bit brittle, a little bit kind of unnatural, grainy. There's multiple terms depending on the exact sound that you're listening to it can get just a little bit less enjoyable on those crisp, bright, attacking sounds. And that's where the A3 Pro I sometimes found to be a bit more enjoyable. But it's not to say that the S17 Pro is bad. There's just areas where each have their strengths. And overall, kind of the net result listening experience, I do think the S17 Pro is the better amplifier. I think it's a very tight race between the two. But when you start thinking about the sense of scale and size in the soundstage that the S17 Pro delivers, when you think about the level of energy and excitement that it can bring to the music without really getting harsh, even though it's got that little bit of lack of refinement in the treble, all those things add up to me to a better listening experience. And if I had both of these on my desk in front of me connected to the same source, I think nine times out of 10, I would probably plug into the S17 Pro. And so if you've got a bit more money to spend and you're willing to deal with an amplifier that does get quite hot, then I think the S17 Pro is probably the good choice. But as I said before, if you've got headphones that already lean in towards brighter treble or more aggressive treble, or if you're just looking for a more relaxed and easygoing listening experience, I think the A3 Pro is still outstanding. And it's also so much smaller and a bit cheaper. So neither of these amps makes the other one redundant but they are quite different and will suit different people with different needs and different headphones. What that does mean is that the S17 Pro is stacking up as one of the best, if not the best headphone amps under $1,000, because up until this point, the A3 Pro had that crown for me. And so the next step for me was to see just how close the S17 Pro could get to another excellent headphone amp, this time in the Hyperman Prelude, and this time we're comparing the $699 US dollar S17 Pro up against the $2,000 dollar Hyperman Prelude. So there's a big jump in price here, and therefore you would expect a fairly significant jump in performance. Using the same testing setup as before, and just swapping out the Gishelli amp and bringing in the Hyperman amp, what I heard as I listened to Flickr by Catherine Williams was two amplifiers that sound fantastic. I started off on this occasion with the Prelude. I was actually testing it around about the same time, the Shit Mjolnir 3 amplifier that I reviewed a little while ago. And so I happened to start my listening here with the Hyperman Prelude. And the sound that it delivers is just wonderfully realistic, natural, and quite smooth. This is an amplifier that leans a bit more towards that tuby, slightly warm, slightly creamy sort of sound, but it is still definitely a high quality solid state amp. It's not thick. It's not muffled, it's not lacking resolution, but I think it's got more of that sort of warmth and richness that the marketing of the S17 Pro might suggest that it has. That's more so what you hear from the Prelude. When I switched from the Prelude 
into the S17 Pro, I immediately noticed that extra sense of treble, clarity, brightness, whatever you want to call it. The S17 Pro definitely brings that forward. To the point that there's a little bit of hiss in this recording, that being flickered by Catherine Williams, and the hiss became more prominent from the S17 Pro. And so some people are going to prefer the sense of clarity that that brings. And I say sense of clarity because it's not that the S17 Pro is actually delivering you anything that the Hyperman Prelude isn't, but it's kind of enhancing it a little bit. The quality of the treble and the sense of emphasis it has because of the character of the amp, I don't mean that it's got a frequency response emphasis or that there's any roll off from the Prelude, but the character of the amp draws your attention to the upper frequencies, that being the S17 Pro does this. And so there you're going to get more sense of clarity, but you're not actually getting more resolution. And so some will prefer that sense of clarity from the S17 Pro. But if you actually spend time and listen even closer and deeper, what I found was that the Prelude helps to separate sounds better. Sounds pop out of space more on the Prelude than they do on the S17 Pro. Now, the S17 Pro is a fantastic amp in terms of its imaging, its stage, the scale that it delivers in the sound stage, but the Prelude just goes a little bit better again. And so you get more scale, more depth, and more separation of sounds from the Prelude. But none of that's to say the S17 Pro isn't excellent, because it's getting way closer to the Prelude than it probably should for the price. Ultimately, just as I said in the previous test with the A3 Pro versus the S17 Pro, if I had both of these amps on my desk in front of me, I would probably plug into the Prelude 90 to 100% of the time. But having said that, if I were to have my time again and had to choose to buy one or other of these, as in if I didn't have both here in front of me, I think it'd be really hard to justify the extra price that goes towards the Prelude. It is better, but whether or not it's $1,300 better, that's a whole other question. And definitely I can see many people preferring what I would say is probably a slightly more neutral sound from the S17 Pro. There'll be plenty of people that prefer it for that reason. And by the way, during my testing, I did also do a really quick comparison that's not in my notes here, but I did a really quick comparison between the S17 Pro and the Shit Audio Mjolnir 3. And as you would expect, if you've seen my Mjolnir 3 review, it wasn't a particularly close battle. The Mjolnir 3 is as good or better than the Prelude in my opinion, even though it's actually cheaper, much cheaper than the Prelude. And so the Mjolnir 3 really does become for me the very best amplifier anywhere from sort of a thousand up to about three thousand US dollars. The Prelude is still excellent, but I think the Mjolnir 3 is actually the bar to beat and the S17 Pro doesn't get there. And so where that leaves us at this point is that I think sonically the S17 Pro is probably the best headphone amp under a thousand US dollars. But once you get over a thousand US dollars, you get some really tough competition, particularly the Mjolnir 3, which I think runs away with it. And so for now, and I am going to say for now, because I know that there's something else coming, for now I think the S17 Pro does take the win. I think it is the best headphone amp under a thousand dollars, but whether or not it can hold onto that crown for long, we're going to have to wait and see. The good news is that for now, and even into the future, it's excellent value, it's a wonderful headphone amp, and those of you that have chosen to buy it, or that are thinking about buying it, I think it's a great choice. And so with all that said, from mostly a sound quality perspective, let's quickly talk about the design of the S17 Pro, because there's a lot about it that I love, and a couple of things not so much. First of all, the things that I do love is that its general aesthetic and design I think is beautiful. It's a wonderful amp to interact with. I like the look of it. I like the display, the connectors, the layout, all that's fantastic. The couple of things that I'm not such a fan of is I don't like the sloped styling of it. I think it's lovely in terms of the looks of the device, but the moment you want to think about stacking something on top of it, it becomes a little bit less comfortable. Most devices will give you enough clearance to stack on top of the S17 Pro, but I do always worry about the lack of clearance between the top of the S17 Pro and whatever's sitting above it. As I've already mentioned, there is also the heat factor to take into account. There is a thermometer built into the S17 Pro and it tells you on the front how hot it gets. And as I said earlier, it runs around about 57 to 58 degrees Celsius in my office here. That's with decent ventilation, but no extra things like fans. The one other thing that I'm not a huge fan of with the S17 Pro is the use of a multi-press system on the control wheel. So this is obviously your volume control here, but it also acts as your switch between the gain modes, the inputs, and also the bias modes. And that means that you've got a different number of presses to do different things, or different length presses, and I find it a bit clumsy. 
If I don't get the timing just right, sometimes when I've been meaning to change the current mode, I've changed the input instead, and it's just a little bit fiddly and a little bit annoying. You do get this remote control with the S17 Pro that will do all of those things. But if you're running in a desktop system like I am, if you're anything like me, you don't generally have the remote control around because everything's in arm's reach. And this is a clumsy system to run via the control knob, in my opinion. It's not dreadful, but it's just a little bit clumsy. If we do a really quick device tour now, because there's not a huge amount more to tell you. Starting on the front of the device, we've got the 4-pin XLR, the 6.3mm and 4.4mm balanced outputs. We've got a standby light there that tells you when the unit's powered up, etc. This lovely display that's going to tell you the input you're on, the gain level, the bias current, the temperature and the volume. So lots of good information laid out really nicely. And it changes color as well. So you can quickly see which bias mode you're in. I think it's blue for the 50 milliamp and red for the 100 milliamp. We've got a lovely volume control over here. I said I didn't like the multi-press system for selecting the different modes, but I do love the volume control. It's got a lovely turning action with a very slight sense of notchiness as you turn through the volume. And it's actually controlling internally an R2R or like a resistor ladder volume control system. So it's a very, very nice control. If we swing around to the back of the device, the back of the device is pretty simple. Starting over here, we've got your power socket and your power switch. The S17 Pro runs an internal linear power supply with its own toroidal transformer. And then you've got a pair of XLR and RCA inputs and outputs. So the S17 Pro is also a preamp and it's a lovely preamp. Essentially take everything I've described from the headphone amp stage and know that that's how it's going to work as a preamp. So it's clean, transparent, neutral, excellent separation, excellent tonal qualities, etc. And so with all of that taken into account, the S17 Pro is incredibly good value. There's no doubt in my mind that it deserves the praise and even the hype that has been directed towards it. I don't think it's the perfect headphone amp. I don't think it's better than options like the Mjolnir 3 from Shit Audio or indeed the Prelude from Heiferman. But at the price you're paying for it, nothing else really can beat it. And so I want to thank Hi-Fi Go for helping out with the purchase of this one. As I said before, I did purchase this one, but Hi-Fi Go, knowing that it was for review purposes, did help out with the price. So thank you to them for helping make this review possible. And if you're in the market for an excellent headphone amp and you want to keep your budget below a thousand US dollars, then the S17 Pro should be right at the very top of your list. The Gishelli Labs A3 Pro is definitely a close second, but as I said before, if you're looking for the power output that this one can deliver, nothing gets anywhere near it. And so if you are in the market for it, I'll put some links down below where you can go and pick up the S17 Pro for yourself. Some of those may be affiliate links, such as through to Hi-Fi Go, so thank you to any and all of you that use those links. It really helps support the channel. And I hope that what I've been able to share with you here today has been helpful and informative with you making your decisions. As always, if you have found the video useful or interesting, then please hit the like button and subscribe and ring the notification bell if you haven't already. But for now, let me leave it to the music. So happy listening and I'll see you here next time on Passion for Sound. Mm -hmm.